Okay, my next question would be, um, how come Jesus worships another God? He doesn't worship another God. He worships the Father because he's not the Father. If Jesus is not the Father, but he's the Word of the Father, his Son that became flesh. And prayer is not just worship, it's communication. And Jesus is the perfect man. Do you want him to ignore the Father and not speak to him? Oh, okay. I thought when he was worshiping him, it was like, uh, for example, like acknowledging that he was better than him, that the Father was better than better? him. Better? No. Never better. There's never better. He is one with the Father, equal. And to use an analogy, but it's a human analogy, there's nothing like God. When you speak to your Father, you acknowledge your Father, not better than you, because he's the same nature as you, right? Yeah, but... The... Are you less human than your Father? Am I less? Sorry, you might cut up. Am less, I less human? One? Are you less no. human than your Father? No, I'm... So then no. your Father cannot be better than you in nature, because you're equal in nature, but he's greater in authority, right? Yeah. So you can be greater than someone in position, but equal to them in nature. So your father, greater than you in authority, but you may be smarter than your father, stronger than your father, more wiser than your father, more rich than your father. But he's still your father. And because he's your father, he has authority over you, but you are equal in nature and value to him. Yeah. So Jesus being the son of God, the word of God, the father has authority over his son. But the son has the same nature of the father. And so it's equal to the father in nature and value. Don't confuse the two. Okay. Um, my next. Okay. So uh, just uh, rapidly. Does, does no, 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 I want to talk to you. But can I ask you. And I'll let you ask your next question. You have a problem with Jesus. Let's say worshiping or praying to the father. Let's say. But you should know this if you follow me. According to your authentic tradition. Even in the Quran, not only does Allah pray, but the Quran will actually come and speak with Allah. And the surahs of the Quran will come to Allah and argue with Allah to intercede for you who recite it. How is that possible? How is that possible? I'll give you the hadith, but let me repeat what I just said. If the Quran is the speech of Allah and it's not a living entity, like Jesus is the speech, the word of the Father, but he is a living person. Distinct from the Father, which is why he can speak to him, even though he's inseparable from him. If the Quran is not a living entity that can speak, how does the Quran and the surahs of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Imran, which is in the Sahih narration, I'm going to give it to you in a minute, go before Allah and argue with Allah and make Allah forgive those that recite the Quran. How is that possible if this is Allah's speech? Is Allah speaking to himself? Again, it would be hypocritical if I speak on something I don't know. Well, let me give you the hadith. I'm going to give you the article in the hadith, and then you can go back to your scholar. So you don't think I'm lying. It's in from Sahih Muslim and other narrations that are deemed Sahih. So let me give it to you. Hold on. The talking Quran, Uthman ibn Farooq's lies exposed. So here it is for the rest of you. Because see, what did I say? Never use an argument against the Trinity that can be used against the Quran if you want to stay Muslim. You can be an atheist, and then we have a different conversation. Sahih Muslim. Here it is online. The chapters of the Quran will appear as flocks of bird and they will make shifah, intercession, for those that recited the Quran. Here it is. So how does the Quran speak to Allah if the Quran is Allah's speech? Is that Allah speaking to himself? I don't okay. know. Exactly. This is the stuff they're not going to teach you. And when they teach you, oh, no. And it's, it's a, yeah, it doesn't mean what it says. I know. So make that weird. Here you go. Abu Umama said he heard Allah's messenger say, recite the Quran for on the day of resurrection, it will come as an intercessor for those who recite it. Wait, the Quran is going to be a Shafi intercessor for you if you recite it, but then it gets worse for you. Recite the two bright ones, Al-Baqarah and Surat Al-Imran, that's chapter two and three. Why? For on the day of resurrection, they will come. So chapter two and chapter three will come as two clouds, so they're going to appear in visible shape, or two shades, or two flocks of birds and ranks, pleading, pleading with Allah for those who recite it, recite them. Recite Surah Al-Baqarah, for to take recourse in it is a blessing, and to give it up is a cause of grief, and the magicians cannot confront it. So, how does the chapters of the Quran appear separately, and how do they appear in visible shape for you to see, and how do they speak? separately from each other to Allah if it's all the speech of Allah. Yeah, I guess I would have to show that to someone in my masajid. Yeah, show it to Shimsi. The guy who's very familiar But my point is, if this is true, and it is because it's Sahih Muslim, 
It's not da'if, brother. Sahih Muslim. If this is true, that means each chapter of the Quran is living and conscious, and each chapter of the Quran can appear separately and it can appear in a shape that you see see these chapters. And that means if the Quran has 114 surahs, that means you have 114 uncreated living beings who can appear visibly and speak and argue with Allah. So how many gods do you have, dude? One. Well, uh... No, because there are 114 surahs. They're uncreated because the Quran is uncreated. Each surah can appear visibly and speak. That's 114 uncreated living beings who can speak. And some of them will speak with Allah. That means if I do math, 114 and Allah, that's 115 gods or 115 divine persons.